This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 10th day of November in the year 2020. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. As the People's Progressive Party civic government marked its 100 days in government, with video recorded testimonials being aired across the country, the opposition APNU AFC mounted a protest outside the office of the president, accusing the 100 day old government of mismanagement. Opposition leader Joe Harmon said there has been mismanagement at every level since the new government took office, and that must not be brushed aside. This is part of a movement to bring pressure to bear on the regime that they have mismanaged this, the affairs of this country over the last hundred days. They have violated elements of our constitution. They have violated the human rights of many of our citizens and they continue to behave in a manner that gives lawlessness a place to reside in the building behind us. The opposition leader also said the resurgence in the drug trade also points to mismanagement there, and he also made mention of the government's decision to disband the National Anti-Narcotics Agency just after it took office. He said the PP Civic Administration's missteps are clear to see. What we have seen is that an environment has been created in which the narco traffickers feel at ease to resume their practices. This had completely, almost completely stopped under us. But when you dismantle the, el the elements that are fighting narcotics, when you dismantle the National Anti-Narcotic Agency, when you appoint as the advisor on national security, when you appoint as the person who heads Kanu now, that was dismissed in the last administration because of these entities, because of what has happened. When you can see the resurgence of some criminal gangs in this country, you know, you know that we are in a bad place. And PNC reform leader and former president David Granger was also part of the protest action today. He described it as more of a movement than a protest by a political party. We are not here as a political party. We are here as part of a movement of Guyanese who feel aggrieved by what has taken place. And we will continue to embrace with, we will continue to engage other members of civil society, as I mentioned, the trade unions, the churches, um, public servants, and other members of society to resist what is taking place and bring this government to its senses. The APNU AFC today said the PP Civic Administration deserves a grade F plus for its management of the country's affairs since taking office. The coalition intends to keep putting pressure on the government as the election petition cases are set to begin within weeks. More news coming up in just a moment. Diana, we've been through it all. But as a people, we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge. Because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class, or religion, we, we are, are one people, people, one strength. And now is our time. A time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Available at Ravina's on Water Street and Anand's on Regent Street, a special Diwali and Black Friday all-in-one sale. Vinlay for $2.98 per yard and Rubber Tile for $4.88 per yard in over 36 colors to choose from, ranging from wooden floor designs and tile designs. Special prices are available for wholesale buyers and shopkeepers. We have beautiful colors to match your homes, office, or schools to make your floors look marvelous. Only at Ravina's on Water Street and Anand's on Regent Street.
Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Special and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Welcome back. President Irfan Ali observed his government's first 100 days in office today by pointing out that it met a number of challenges when it took office back in August. According to the president, the government since then has found itself tackling many of the immediate needs of citizens. He said over the past 100 days, the government has been relieving the burdens which was placed on the backs of citizens across the country. He pointed to the government's COVID-19 relief package and said that as of today, the hinterland communities have already benefited from the grant. The president also pointed to a number of the budget measures as some of his government's achievements since taking office. He made reference to the removal of the value-added tax from a number of items, including water and light. And he said his government will now be working to restore hope across the country. And as Ghana continues to see an increase in coronavirus cases and deaths, the president said the efforts of his government will continue until the disease is brought under control in the country. Education Minister Priya Manik Chand has announced that next year's Grade 6 assessment examinations will not take place in March or April because of the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. She said it is likely that the exams will be pushed back to later in the year or another form of assessment will be used to place students in secondary schools. Grade 6 is our exam. We can set it. We can determine how we write it, whether we write it. It's a placement exam. It's not an exam to determine whether you're bright or not, it's an assessment to place students. Are there other ways we can place students in fairly into secondary school that we're looking at that? We're looking at whether we can postpone the exams, not do it in April, May. Actually, I could tell you now, the exams will not be written in April, May. Um, not April, May, March, April. It's usually just before Easter. It's not going to be written then. Um, so we're definitely going to be postponing if we write it at all. Uh, we don't know as yet. We're looking at whether we could do just a paper one, if it would be uh, the fairest thing we can do for the children. We're looking at whether we can test only up to the grade five level. That all depends on when we go back into school. On the issue of grade six students returning to the classroom, the education minister said much more consideration will have to be given to such a move, despite the urgings of some parents. Again, we spoke to teachers, I think within the first two weeks of my entering office, we had a meeting that had a thousand teachers, um, grade six teachers. In fact, it was so full, people couldn't get in the room. And um, we heard from them. There are cries. I got a letter from the region one redo today, um, Mr. Nigel Richards, saying that people are begging him to go back into the classroom for grade six, but we have to be careful. We have to phase this opening. We have to look at the impact of the opening. We have to measure all those things before we could take another big step like that. There are over 13,000 students registered for grade 6 in Guyana. Schools across the country have been closed since March. Earlier this year, the common entrance examinations were postponed by more than two months because of the same coronavirus pandemic. Well, let's tell you now that Senior Superintendent of Police Edmund Cooper was today admitted to the local bar. His petition was presented by attorneys Mark Waldron and Ronald Bert Smith before Chief Justice Roxon George. The senior superintendent of police said with his formal training in legal matters, he now hopes to add to the capacity of the Guyana police force. What I plan to do with this um, knowledge is to see how better I could have the force move from strength to strength because we have realized that it's not easy at this time, I regard to the fact that persons are very learned in the law and it's very important and pivotal for police to up their game in relation to the law. So I'm hoping sincerely that I be given the opportunity to um, showcase or to help my fellow colleagues, whether junior or senior, so that all of us could make a meaningful contribution to law and its development and we do the right thing and then let um, the respect that we had once before. The Ghana Police Force in a statement today extended its best wishes to the senior police officer who is currently pursuing additional studies in counter-terrorism. Mr. Cooper also said he faced many obstacles and challenges during his legal studies, but he's happy that it has reached the stage where he is now officially an attorney at law. I'm very elated at this point in time, having regard to the fact that 
Having started this journey something in 2009, um, it wasn't easy, it was very difficult because I had a lot of challenges in the organization, but I triumphed. Uh, it was resilience, courage, and help from God brought me this far. With some help from some good friends that I will always cherish as long as I live. The Ghana Police Force has alerted the International Police Organization Interpol on its search for the Guyanese scrap metal dealer who was wanted for that 11.5 ton cocaine bust. Senior law enforcement sources indicated in the news source today that Caribbean countries have also been alerted in the search for Marlon Primo. The Customs Anti Narcotics Unit believes that Primo skipped the country just before the bust was made in Belgium last Wednesday. The container shipment left Guyana back in September. Primo has been named as the shipper of the container that was found with a 1 billion US dollars worth of cocaine on arrival in Belgium. The local businessman was involved in the export of scrap metal for a number of years. Local investigators are also seeking a number of other suspects as the probe into the international drug bust continues. Three customs officers and a customs broker were arrested over the weekend as they were the ones who oversaw the loading and shipment of the container, including scanning at the John Finance Wharf here in Georgetown. The large packets and parcels of cocaine were found stashed behind a fake metal wall in the container with pieces of scrap metal in front of it. Based on how the container was packed, security experts have said it should have been easy for the officers on duty at the scanner to notice the difference in the materials in the container once it went through the system. A probe so far has found that some of the scanned images of the container were deleted. However, efforts have been made to retrieve those images from a backup system. The same U.S. Secretary of State who threatened and later imposed sanctions against the former APNU AFC government over the Ghana elections has now found himself defending his own president's refusal to accept his loss at the U.S. elections. During a press conference today at the State Department, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who paid an official visit to Guyana back in September, was grilled about the U.S. pressing other countries to accept the results of their elections, when the U.S. President Donald Trump is now refusing to do the same. Pompeo, who fired off several tweets at the former Guyana government when it was demanding only valid votes to make up the election results here, said election matters take time, and when it comes to the U.S. elections, the Donald Trump administration only wants legal votes. There will be a smooth transition to a second Trump administration. I'm very confident that we will count, and we must count every legal vote. We must make sure that any vote that wasn't lawful ought not be counted. That dilutes your vote if it's done improperly. Got to get that right. When we get it right, we'll get it right. The U.S. president has accused his opponents of rigging the American elections without providing any real evidence. He's also been refusing to concede his loss at the elections. The Trump administration has even moved to the courts with a number of court cases challenging the results in several U.S. states. Meanwhile, Guyana and several other countries have already extended congratulations to the U.S. president-elect Joe Biden although there has been no urging for the sitting U.S. president to accept the results and move on. Across the Region is coming up next. Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Salt Guyana Inc. Mobile Delvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Salt Guyana Inc.
We are legions of men standing strong, but never too proud to stoop and help someone. We must send a clear signal to all. Do right. Walk in upright ways, knowing that's what being a man is all about. And ever aware that things will only get worse when good men do nothing. Stand strong. Be the one to live right. But as a people we have weathered every storm and risen to every challenge because it is the people of Guyana that gives it its strength. All the people, regardless of race, class or religion, we, we are, are one, one people, people, one strength. And now is our time. A time to rise. Together, we rise. Mobile Dalvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Mobile Dalvac and all other mobile lubricants are distributed by Sol Guyana Inc. Across the region right now, the Trinidad and Tobago government has outlined new protocols for entry into the country as it eased some of the existing measures in place to curb the spread of the coronavirus. Prime Minister Kit Rowley said it would be impossible for all Trinidadians wanting to head home for the holiday season to be accommodated. Trinidad's National Security Minister Stuart Young announced that the new measures will take effect from the 15th of this month. He said that persons entering Trinidad and Tobago would now have to be in possession of a negative PCR test done two days prior to arrival, and they would be placed in state quarantine facilities, mainly hotels, for the next seven days and released only after testing negative after the sixth day in quarantine. As of last Friday, more than 13,000 Trinidadians and residents applied to re-enter the island. In neighboring Brazil, the Brazilian clinical trial for a Chinese COVID-19 vaccine has been suspended after health authorities reported a severe adverse incident. Brazilian health regulator Anvisa said the incident had taken place on the 29th of October, but gave no further details. The suspension reportedly followed the death of a volunteer, but it is not clear if it was related to the trial. The head of the institute conducting the trial said there had been no adverse reactions. He told reporters that the suspension had caused indignation and that the organizers of the trials had not been consulted. The CoronaVac vaccine developed by Chinese firm Sinovac Biotech is one of several in final stage testing globally. Sinovac says it is confident in the safety of the vaccine. The firm has already been using it to immunize thousands of people at home in an emergency use program. Brazil has been one of the countries worst affected by coronavirus, recording more than 5.6 million confirmed cases and more than 163,000 deaths. And finally, at this time, international news. This year's Atlantic hurricane season has broken the record for the number of named storms the U.S. National Hurricane Center has announced. Subtropical storm Tita in the Northeast Atlantic is the 29th, breaking the previous record of 28, which was set back in 2005. Forecasters say another system is forming in the Caribbean, which could be named in the near future. Meteorologists say several factors are behind the increasing number of tropical storms. Particularly dangerous storms are given names to raise public awareness before they strike. The hurricane season, which runs from the 1st of July to November 30, has produced storms like Eta, which struck Florida at the weekend after causing destruction and killing dozens in parts of Central America. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting.